state the domain range vertex and axis symmetry. And what I want to do is I want to show you um, pretty much kind of two different ways to go through this, all right? So um, the first way, ladies and gentlemen, is let's just kind of go back and remember what the vertex, if we remember the, vert the form of the vertex, actually, let's just look at a graph. If we look at a parabola, remember a parabola has an axis of symmetry, right? And the vertex is either the max or the minimum. But remember that vertex went through the axis of symmetry. So the first thing that we want to determine is how do you find the axis of symmetry? How can we remember to do that? Axis symmetry, remember, is x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. So if you want to find the axis of symmetry, just when given a parabola in this format, just take opposite of b divided by 2a. So in this case, to find this, we could just say x equals negative 4 divided by 2 times 2, which equals negative 1. Then if I want to find the vertex, so that's axis symmetry. Now if I want to find the vertex, remember that the axis symmetry goes through the vertex. So therefore, the vertex takes in the point of opposite of b divided by 2a, then comma f of opposite of b divided by 2a. So then what we do is we find out what the axis symmetry is, and then we plug that into our function. So in this, or plug that in for our x. So in this case, we already know that the axis symmetry is negative 1, right? But to find f of that, then we just say equals 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 1. So what you're doing is now you're figuring, now you have the x value. Now you're going to plug that in for x to find the y value. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 times, or 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 4 is going to be negative 2. Plus 1 will be negative 1. So therefore, your vertex is at negative 1 comma negative 1. All right. So that's how to find the axis symmetry and vertex by using the formula. The next way, ladies and gentlemen, is if you guys remember, if I have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We can, we can find the axis symmetry and vertex with an equation and then that format. However, if we have an equation written this format, finding the axis symmetry and vertex is very easy because we know the axis of symmetry is just y equals h, and the vertex is h comma k. So then we can say, can we rewrite this in that format? Can we rewrite this equation in this form? Yeah, and when the process we do to do that is called completing the square. So completing the square, you'd have to factor out a 2. Okay. Then you take 2, divide it by 2, square it, which equals um, 1. So if you have y equals 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1, plus 1, and then you've got to add the 1 again, but then the 1 is being multiplied by the 2. Oh, uh, you've got to subtract 1. It's on the same side, right? Minus 1 times 2. Therefore, y equals, now you factor that, times 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 1. Therefore, you guys can now see that the axis of symmetry is at negative 1, and the vertex is negative 1, negative 1. Okay. So it doesn't matter which way you guys want to do it. If you're very comfortable with completing the square, you can do it that way. If you remember these formulas, then you could use it that way as well. Okay? Just two different kind of ways to look at it. Yes? Oh, I forgot to answer the question, right? <laughs> Thank you. So now let's go and take a look at the graph. So we know the vertex is at negative 1, negative 1, right? Now, is this a max or a min? Um, Desi, could you move over one seat to your right, please? So now we need to determine, is this a maximum or a minimum point? All right. And what we do is we look at our a. Remember, if the a is positive, that means the graph is going to be opening up. If it's negative, the, a, the graph opens down. So since this is positive, that means my graph opens up. So it looks something like this. Right? So we can say the domain is going to keep on expanding and expanding. So our domain is going to equal all real numbers. However, our range, you can see it only goes as low as negative 1. 
and then it goes all the way up. So our range is negative 1 to infinity. Okay? And that's it for that one.